Hey guys, it's Joel from GunToter.org. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing an initial review of the Sig Sauer Romeo MSR Red Dot Optic. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the overview of the optic. We're going to talk a little bit about the positives, a little bit about the negatives, and then kind of where I see this optic fitting into uh, a prepared individual's kind of overall um, equipment setup. Uh, please keep in mind this is an initial review. So if you're looking for uh, you know, long-term uh, durability tests and things like that, um, you're not gonna get that here. Uh, but I will talk a little bit about kind of the, the, what I see from the last few days of me playing with this optic, and then I do have longer-term durability tests planned as well. So if I've got your interest, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the overall features of the sight. When you open up the box, you're gonna see a couple things. You're gonna see the sight with the mount, you're gonna see a battery, you're gonna see a tool, and you're gonna see a cleaning cloth and a fold-out manual. So that's what's actually in the box. Um, about the sight itself, as you can see, it's kind of modeled after, say, an Aimpoint T2. It's roughly the same size and it's roughly the same weight. Um, it is a two minute of angle red dot. They do make a green dot version. This particular one is the red dot. So it's a two minute of angle red dot. Um, the windage and elevation are adjustable uh, 50 minutes of angle plus or minus, so 100 of total travel. Uh, it is adjustable in half minute increments. And you can do that with the tool or you can do it with just, you know, um, flathead screwdriver. So easy to work with there. There's no special tools required. Um, as far as the brightness goes, there are 12 settings on here. There are two night vision and 10 day. There are also two off positions, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, and it is ambidextrous, so it's up here. It is a 1632 battery. And uh, the advertised life of that battery is 20,000 hours on what they say is a medium setting. Um, so they don't define what a medium setting is but 20,000 hours is over two years of continuous runtime, so that's not bad. Um, you also have your uh, scope caps, uh, which are clear, you can see through them. And uh, this whole thing comes in at about five and a half ounces. So it is nice and lightweight. Um, it is made in China. It is uh, engineered in Oregon, made in China, according to their literature. And right now the MSRP is around $170, but the actual retail price that you'll probably find is somewhere between 100 and 120, uh, depending on if you catch it on sale. So as you can see, nice, lightweight, compact. Uh, it is waterproof and fogproof. It's what's called IPX7, so it is waterproof uh, up to a meter or three feet, for those of you who don't wanna use the metric system. Um, so overall, you know, small, inexpensive, and uh, we'll get into some of the positives and negatives, starting with the positives coming up next. Now let's talk about some of the positives of this site. Um, obviously the size and the weight are big positives. Um, you know, it's not gonna add a lot to your rifle. Um, the price is obviously a positive. Now there are some negatives associated with, you know, the whole made in China and the price thing. We'll talk about those in a minute. But honestly, for 100 to $120, it's a neat little site, um, you know, and I think that it's probably gonna be worth your money. Uh, the battery life, 20,000 hours is a long time um, on a medium setting. So I'm gonna assume that's around six. Um, the fact that you can adjust the um, site or the, the brightness of the site with either hand is nice. Um, you know, the old uh, T1s, you could really only adjust it on the left side or you had to come all the way across to try to adjust it, which was not super easy. You know, this was right up top and it's easy to adjust. Uh, I like two minute of angle red dots. Uh, I feel like that's a great balance between speed and also a little bit of precision if you need to take a more precise shot a little bit further out for smaller targets or smaller target areas. Um, as far as, uh, you know, looking through the site, um, the dot appears very clear, the glass appears very clear, even when looking through these uh, flip down scope covers. Um, 
Honestly, it's nice having that little bit of extra protection and the fact that I can look right through them and still, you know, nothing really changes as far as being able to see and identify my target. Uh, that's a nice, that's a nice positive. Uh, the fact that you can adjust without a special tool, also a positive. Um, and uh, one kind of neat thing on the um, brightness adjustment, uh, like I said, it's got 12 total settings, so two night and 10 day. It also has two off positions. Um, when I was playing around with this, I found that indoors, you kind of wanted it in the four to six position, but outdoors, you really needed to get uh, significantly higher. Now, granted, it was a really bright day when I tried it, but I found that you had to go almost up to eight to really be able to see the dot, you know, and get the good contrast. So, the two off positions, there's one below the night vision and there's one above 10, which is nice because say you're running this outdoors a lot and uh, you know you, leave, you, want it, you want to be able to get back and forth to eight um, quickly. It's a lot easier to go up to 10 and then back down to eight than it is to go all the way down to zero. Um, so it just kind of makes it a little bit more convenient. It's, it's nice, to, nice to see that. Um, the 1632 batteries are uh, pretty available. Uh, I did kind of a quick check yesterday uh, when I was out running around. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them at Home Depot. You know, so this isn't something that you're gonna have to order somewhere specific. If you need to run out and get one, uh, you can, uh, you know, after the two years of, of continuous use. So um, in addition to looking like a T2, it also happens to fit the T2 mounting pattern. So if you wanted to change out the mount on here, you can get a T2 pattern mount and it will fit. The mount itself, which I'm really glad it comes with a useful mount as opposed to a flat top mount, can't stand flat top mounts, um, or low mounts, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, this one puts it at about an absolute co-witness. If I was to have iron sights on here, that's about where it would be. Um, personally, I prefer a little bit higher but the fact that it comes with a taller mount period is a huge positive. Um, you know, I've bought uh, T1s, T2s before, you know, spent five, $600 on an optic only to find out that, you know, it came with a low riser and I can't see through it. And now I got to spend another hundred plus dollars to get it to a usable height. And I mean, that's, that's annoying. Let's just be honest. So the fact that this comes out of the box at an actual usable height is nice. Um, the fit and finish on it seems pretty nice. I uh, haven't really banged it around a whole lot, but, uh, you know, it's, it seems functional and, uh, overall, you know, for what you're paying, it's got a lot of positive features. Now there are some negatives and, uh, we're going to get into those next. Now for a few of the negatives. Um, honestly, there aren't that many from my initial impressions. Now, there may be some that come up in the longer term durability testing, but since this is an initial review, I have just a couple little ones that are kind of nitpicky, but I'll go through them anyway. Uh, one is the 1632 battery. While it is commonly available, uh, it is significantly more expensive than a 2032. Now we're talking, you know, a few bucks here, but it's annoying that, you know, a 1632 is roughly twice the price of a 2032. I can buy a four pack of 2032s for 10 bucks. A single uh, 1632 is like five. So it's annoying. It's a few bucks, but it's annoying. Um, it's also an extra type of battery that you have to keep around. You know, so if you're trying to you know, streamline and, and minimize the number of batteries you have to keep around for all your electro optics, this is gonna add another one. Um, the other thing is on the, um, on the brightness adjustment. It is a very, very, um, very, very positive adjustment, meaning it's hard to move. Uh, not a big deal for, you know, an adult, but say if you bought these for uh, children, like if you were going to teach a child either on an Airsoft or a 22, which is actually what I did. I bought two of these for my sons, which are both younger. And uh, they actually had a lot of trouble adjusting um, the brightness. Um, now it breaks in a little bit. Uh, my son's gotten it down as he's been working with it, uh, kind of just twisting it back and forth for the last day or so. Uh, it does break in eventually a little bit, but uh, 
that initial difficulty for adjusting may be very frustrating um, for you know your child. You may have to adjust it for them. Um, as far as you know, looking through the site, like I said, it's got great clarity. But there, if you're shooting with one eye open, which you shouldn't be because it's a red dot, you're shooting with two eyes open. But if you you know do shoot with one eye open, you will notice there a little bit of the the you know projector inside. It does kind of intrude a little bit down in kind of the lower right hand corner. It's it's pretty slight, um, but it's noticeable. I don't think, like I said, for for two eye open shooting, you know, for speed acquisition, I don't really think it's going to cause a huge issue. You know, but if you're sitting there and you're trying to go one eye and really focus it might bug you. Like I said, it's kind of nitpicky, but you know, you might see it. Um, you know, I mentioned the mount as a positive. Uh, like I said, it is a absolute co-witness. I like taller mounts, so you might consider that a negative. I don't really. I think the fact that it has a mount at all is a positive. Um, and that's really about all I have for initial negatives. Uh, like I said, long-term durability testing, especially uh, I plan on testing the 20,000 hour battery life, may reveal some kind of further down. Uh, but for initial ones, it seems like a pretty solid optic with the exception of those little nitpicky things that I named. So up next, we're gonna talk about kind of where, you know, this budget optic fits into where I think it fits into, you know, an individual's kind of overall uh, equipment list. So talk about that in just a second. So where do I see this optic kind of fitting in to, you know, a prepared citizens kind of overall equipment loadout? I kind of see it fitting in uh, three different places. I see it fitting in uh, learning. I see it fitting in into kind of a fun category and I see it fitting in into kind of an experiment category. Um, as far as learning goes, like I said, I actually bought several of these for my sons uh, to teach them kind of how to shoot on a red dot. Um, they're on their airsoft guns right now, and I hope to eventually migrate them over to, uh, to their 22s once we get those all set up. Um, red dots are much easier to teach uh, new shooters on. Not saying you don't need to teach them on irons, but if you need to get someone up to speed fast, red dots are a lot easier to teach. Um, they're kind of, Honestly, they're a lot more intuitive and they require less, you know, focus as you use them. So they're great for learning. And, uh, you know, when you're setting up your kids' guns, I can't justify in my mind buying a full price, uh, you know, Aimpoint T2 at anywhere from $600 to $900, depending on what mount I'm using, for a learner gun. Now, yes, if we get to a duty gun later, you know, and I'm buying them their first real AR, I might, you know, spend the money on something more expensive like an EOTech, uh, Aimpoint, Trigicon, whatever. But for learning, I'm not going to spend that kind of money. But 120 bucks, you know, I can swing two of them, one for each son, get it set up, and you know, get them learning. So that I think that's a really positive thing. Um, it's also uh, learning even for an adult. Say, for example, you know, you have someone who's never used a red dot before. They're not sure if they can, because there's different types of red dots, um, different types of you know eye issues. Some people can use them, some people can't. If they wanna experiment and or they wanna learn and kind of find out, can I use this? You know, I can spend 120 bucks, I can figure out if a red dot's even for me, and then you know, if I want something better later, I can move up to it without losing a ton of money. You know, as, once again, as opposed to buying a six, seven hundred dollar optic and then realizing I can't use it. So, you know, in the learning world, there's a there's a lot that can be done with a budget optic. Um, in the fun world, you know, if you're getting into competition, like I, you saw it was mounted on my AR9. AR9 is not a duty gun. It's just designed for me to take to local matches and have some fun with it. Put a hundred twenty dollar optic on it, have some fun with it. If it breaks. I don't really care that much. I really don't. Um, you know, and if I feel like I need something better later, I can always get it. Um, but it's, you know, it's fun, it's quick, it's easy. Throw it on there and bang it up and just let it roll. Um, when it comes to experimenting, um, say for example, you wanted to experiment with different T2 mount configurations. 
Um, you wanted to experiment with height. You wanted to experiment with, you know, a scope and an offset red dot. These are all things that you can experiment with for the low, low price of 100 to $120. Figure out whether you like those configurations and then you can go out, purchase the more expensive dot and put it on the configuration that you already proof tested and you've already figured out works for you. Um, so yes, it is a budget optic. I would not consider it a duty optic. Um, I'm sorry, I just can't bring myself to classify a $100 sight as a good to go for duty without some serious testing on it. Um, but for the budget, there are a lot of things you can do with it. Um, don't knock it till you try it, I guess. And you know, figure out where does it fit for you? It's kind of some of my ideas as far as where I think it fits in. Um, for you, you may have some different ideas. If you do have some different ideas, uh, if you have ex long-term experience with this optic, or if you've had to use SIG's warranty, because the warranties sound really good, but I've never used them. So if you've had to use their warranty, um, we have a comments section. Uh, I also have email. You know, shoot me an email, throw some comments down below, help people learn. Um, hopefully this has been kind of a useful initial review. Uh, a little bit further down the road, I will hopefully have a, a long-term durability review for you, um, see how it works out. But if this has been useful, I would really appreciate, you know, down in the corner, likes, shares, subscribes, all those fun things. Um, we do have a Patreon page. Uh, if you'd like to support us monetarily, that would be awesome. If not, like I said, likes and shares go a long way in the social media world. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to see you with our next video.